A warm welcome and thanks to everyone for taking the time to join this webinar. Today we're going to present the highlights of our latest sustainability report. As some of you may know, we've been publishing a sustainability report since 2011, tracking our progress towards responsible palm oil production. This year's report is built around the theme of realising sustainable policies in practice. Essentially, we're going to tell you about how we're taking our policy commitments in the GAR Social and Environmental Policy, known as the GSEP, and turning them into a reality. This is especially apt as last year we reported on the many new initiatives we have been launching, including having an updated sustainability policy, a reorganisation of the sustainability department to ensure better implementation, and the launch of a supplier engagement and traceability program, plus deeper engagement community engagement, to name a few. In this presentation, you'll hear about the, how these initiatives are progressing and some of the really innovative, exciting things we're doing on the ground, especially in setting up what's been described by the World Economic Forum as protection production partnerships with local communities. These partnerships are key to achieving our conservation aims while at the same time helping the community continue to realise their goals and aspirations and ensuring they continue to earn decent livelihoods. For the first time, we're also exploring how we can link what we are doing as a company to the achievement of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. We've begun by identifying some of the goals most closely aligned with what we're already doing or planning to do, and you'll see that indicated in our report and in this presentation. As all this is still at a very early stage, we're monitoring developments regarding the UN SDGs and global corporate response, especially on how companies can report their progress and impact in line with the goals. This will be reflected in our future reports. We've also included, for the first time, a statement from our Board of Directors. This underlines how our commitment to responsible palm oil and sustainability is not a separate add-on, but very much part of the overall business enterprise risk management and given due consideration at the very highest level of management. I would also like to highlight that apart from our focus on environmental issues, we continue to keep abreast of current trends and concerns. In line with our commitment to continuous improvement, we've asked several independent external parties to evaluate our labour practices and our implementation of the GSEP. The results of these studies will be used to help us close any gaps between policy and practice, and there will be more details about this in future reports. I will now hand over to Xu Ling, who will take you through the highlights of our report. Thanks, Anita. This is what we'll be covering in our presentation. I'll start off with some quick background on GAR and our journey towards responsible palm oil production and move on to the highlights of the SR 2016. We will then have a Q&A session. If you would like to ask questions, you may type them in the box indicated and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. To start off, I will just quickly run through some facts about GAR. We're an integrated palm oil plantation company and the largest palm oil grower in Indonesia. In 2016, we had a total revenue of more than 7 billion US dollars and a core net profit of 186 million US dollars. GAR manages 169 oil palm estates in over 488,000 hectares of plantation area. Our harvested fresh fruit bunches are processed in gar owned mills strategically located near the plantations to produce crude palm oil and palm kernel. GAR currently has 45 mills and in 2016 our mills produced over 2.5 million tons of crude palm oil and palm kernel. We are also a significant job creator, especially in the rural areas and we provide jobs for over 170,000 people across Indonesia. We offer an extensive range of products and here you can see some of our key brands in Indonesia. We are focusing on R&D to develop new products to meet customer demand. This includes meeting demand for higher quality and more sustainable palm oil goods. Our products are sold globally with the most revenue coming from China and India. 
A few facts about palm oil. In its ability to lift people, especially rural populations, out of poverty, create jobs and reduce inequalities, it's certainly not a stretch to see responsible palm oil as an SDG commodity. Palm oil also remains the most productive vegetable oil crop in the world and it also uses less fertilizer and pesticide per hectare compared to other major oil crops. We believe that economic growth can go hand in hand with environmental protection and we're putting this into practice on the ground. Throughout the years we've been adopting responsible social and environmental practices. Let me take you through some of our milestones. We were the first Indonesian palm oil grower to adopt a zero burning policy in 1997. We adopted a no development on peat policy in 2010. These two practices are key to preventing forest fires and haze on our concessions. In 2011, we were the first in the industry to adopt a forest conservation policy, leading the way for the rest of the sector. In that year, GA also joined the RSPO. Our subsidiary, Smart, had already joined in 2005. As part of our holistic approach to sustainability, we complemented our FCP with policies on social and community engagement and yield improvement. These form the core tenets of our approach to responsible practices on the ground. We also worked with stakeholders like Greenpeace and TFT to evolve new standards in forest conservation with the high carbon stock approach. In 2014, as our downstream business started to take off, we extended our policy scope to cover the whole value chain. One of the results of this has been the achievement of 100% traceability to the mill in 2015. That same year, we integrated all our policies into one master document called the GAR Social and Environmental Policy, or the GSEP. We continue to achieve milestones on our journey with initiatives in combating fire and haze and extending our supplier mapping and engagement. As I mentioned, in 2015, we adopted the GSEP, which is our main roadmap as we continue on our journey to achieve responsible palm oil. It covers environmental management, social and community engagement, work environment and industrial relations, and marketplace and supply chain. Through our sustainability reporting, we hope to provide stakeholders with a better understanding of our approach to responsible palm oil and our progress in meeting our commitments in the GSEP. The report covers our operations in Indonesia, which provides the bulk of our earnings and is where all our plantations are based. We are publishing our sustainability report annually in accordance with the latest SGX rules. This year, we have moved to adopt GRI standards guidelines, the latest version of the GRI reporting framework, making us one of the early adopters in Singapore. We are committed to working towards the full assurance of the information presented in our report. The calculation of our greenhouse gas emissions for our subsidiary in Indonesia has been independently verified by EY. We are also commissioning other independent external parties to verify our GSEP implementation and labor practices. For the first time, we have also included a board of directors statement. All our sustainability reports can be found online and as part of our transparent reporting on our progress, you can also access our sustainability dashboard directly from our website. Here's what our new sustainability dashboard looks like. You can access it from the GAR website without a login. Here you will find our latest fire incident reports and grievance lists, as well as updates on traceability information. To conduct the assessment in line with global best practice and the GRI guidelines, we commissioned an independent consultancy, Corporate Citizenship, to survey representatives from our key stakeholder groups. The main issue areas where we have significant current or potential impacts are shown in our materiality matrix. Key issues include those involving high carbon stock and high conservation value areas and community relations. Our materiality assessment guides our reporting, 
and we have therefore reported most comprehensively on our most material issues. Our commitment to delinking deforestation from palm oil production is spelled out in our GSEP under no development and protection of high carbon stock and high conservation value areas. Successful forest conservation is the means by which we can help mitigate climate change through avoidance of greenhouse gas emissions. HCS refers to forests that hold a higher amount of carbon, the removal of which causes major emissions. HCV areas are areas with high biological, ecological, social or cultural values. In all, we have identified and are committed to protecting around 72,000 hectares of HCS and HCV areas, about the size of Singapore. GAR first developed the HCS approach in partnership with TFT and Greenpeace in 2011. Since then, many others in the industry and the forestry sector have adopted the approach. We have rolled out the HCS approach in all our concessions. With regards to HCV and the protection of rare and endangered species, I would like to give an update on an area that is very important to GAR, and that is orangutan conservation. Since 2011, we have partnered with Orangutan Foundation International to support the release of wild-born, formerly captive orangutans into their natural habitat. Up till May of this year, we've released 87, bringing us closer to realizing our target of 100 orangutans by the end of the year. Identifying conservation areas is really only the first step. Ensuring these areas are properly protected requires a workable model of collaboration and partnership with local communities and other key stakeholders such as local government. Without this, areas set aside for conservation remain prone to encroachment by external parties who frequently regard the area as unoccupied land. The World Economic Forum has called for new models of sustainable rural development and in particular place-based protection production partnerships. At GAR, we've been working on these partnerships since 2015 when we began collaborating with local communities to formally map their villages through participatory mapping. This effort is part of the process to safeguard the free prior and informed consent or FPIC rights of the community. We help the villagers map out critical areas such as customary boundaries and land necessary for food security. This map is then lodged with and formally recognized by the authorities. It helps to clarify land tenure rights and enables villagers to gain access to government development funds for the first time. The mapping lays the foundation for further dialogue on conservation through our participatory conservation planning process. Our intensive consultative approach takes into account local community concerns, needs and aspirations, including food security requirements and the continued ability to earn a decent and stable livelihood. In 2016, we rolled out mapping in 67 villages across our concessions and carried out conservation planning with 10 villages in West Kalimantan. We secured agreement to set aside over 7,000 hectares of HCS forests for conservation. A key component of this initiative is the Alternative Livelihoods Program, which helps communities continue to earn a living without disturbing sensitive ecosystems like peatlands. We are starting several organic farming projects under this program using spare communal land with local communities in West Kalimantan. These projects help boost their income, increase food self-sufficiency while exposing the local communities to new sustainable farming methods without the use of chemicals and most importantly without the use of fire to clear land. Scaled up, we believe this could be a workable, inclusive model for successful conservation and we are rolling it out progressively across our concessions. We are complementing our community conservation partnerships with community-based fire prevention programs in areas that have been identified as fire-prone.
Our fire prevention program, Desa Siaga Api, was piloted in 2016 in 17 villages in West Kalimantan and Jambi. At the end of the first year of the program, all villages met targets for fire prevention and qualified for community infrastructure support. Three villages were also chosen by the government as national pilot villages to showcase a successful fire prevention initiative. The, the pilot will now evolve into an expanded program called Desa Makmo Peduli Api and will focus on fire prevention, forest conservation and food security. As for Ga, thanks to our strict zero burning policy, we had virtually zero fires in 2016. We continue to remain vigilant and 10,000 emergency response personnel remain on standby to suppress any fires. Our commitments to no development of HCS forests and HCV areas, no development on peat and zero burning represent the most significant impact that we have on the environment. We are also committed to measuring and reducing our environmental impacts across all our operations. In 2015, we started a three-year carbon footprint assessment project to gain a better understanding of the emissions associated with our Indonesian operations and how to reduce them. We have now completed our baseline assessments and will come up with a greenhouse gas reduction strategy by 2018. In the meantime, we have increased our methane capture facilities to seven, each of which can reduce between 40 to 55 percent of operational emissions on site. GAS Zero Waste Policy aims to reuse, recover and recycle. We reuse 100% of the solid and liquid waste generated from the crude palm oil production process. Both types of waste are used as organic fertilizer and as a source of energy. We aim to minimize pesticide use throughout all growth phases of the palm trees and we carry out an integrated pest management approach. In January 2016, GAR stopped using paraquat, replacing it with glufosinate ammonium to further safeguard the welfare of our workers. At the same time, GAR is promoting the use of biopesticides to enhance the soil condition and the health of palm trees. I've already described the key consultative and inclusive approach we are using with the community to secure the FPIC rights and meet conservation goals through our participatory mapping and participatory conservation approaches. We are also continuing our program of FPIC remediation to address gaps in implementation. We've been carrying this out with stakeholders including, including TFT, local CSO links and ecological consultants. As part of our ongoing commitment to help communities improve their standard of living, we carry out various social programs across all our concessions. Many of these are aligned with the UN SDGs. One of the main ways that the palm oil sector delivers SDGs such as decent work and economic growth is through its ability to generate jobs. We provide thousands of jobs, especially in rural areas, bringing great impact in th terms of eradicating poverty and promoting economic advancement. In e Indonesia, we provide over 170,000 jobs, which includes over 68,000 plasma smallholders. We pay above the minimum wage for both full-time and part-time workers. We have started to commission external parties to assess our labour practices and we will use the results from these studies to help formulate action plans to improve our practices. The bulk of our procurement is made up of crude palm oil and palm kernel for our downstream refining locations in Indonesia. In 2016, these raw materials were sourced from 45 GAR and 429 independent mills. Since we extended the scope of our sustainability policy in 2014, we have been focusing on bringing our supply chain along with us on our sustainability journey through dialogue and engagement. This is essential if we are to ensure that the palm oil industry increasingly adopts and strengthens responsible practices.
Our traceability to the mill process, which we completed in 2015, enabled us to map all the mills supplying our eight downstream processing locations in Indonesia. Working with these mills, we are now mapping the supply chain all the way back to origin. The launch of our traceability to the plantation, or TTP, exercise in 2016 is enabling us to reach out to a greater number of our suppliers, including middlemen, agents, brokers, and smallholders. Prior to the TTP exercise, GAR mills already knew the source of 90% of their fresh fruit bunches. We are on track to complete the mapping exercise by end 2017. In 2016, 15 GAR mills achieved full TTP and overall GAR mills achieved 88% TTP. Third-party supplier mills will have till 2020 to complete mapping to the plantation. The latest supplier data can be viewed on the GAR sustainability dashboard. Beyond traceability, GAR is using the increased interaction with suppliers to spread responsible palm oil practices and build supplier capability to adopt these practices. We are therefore carrying out a program of supplier site visits and organizing training and special workshops for them. Our supplier visits help us understand where our suppliers need help most in adopting responsible palm oil practices. A report on one of these assessments can be viewed on our dashboard. Similar systemic issues were discovered, including a lack of understanding of what responsible palm oil practices entail and lack of capacity to adopt these practices. We are therefore focusing on helping them in these areas. We have also set up a dedicated supplier support team and helpline for all suppliers who need help on compliance with the GSEP. We believe that this intense engagement is key to transforming our supply chain and by extension, the industry. This is a snapshot of the supply chain in the palm oil sector which aims to indicate some of the complexity of fully mapping our suppliers all the way back to the plantation. Contrary to the popular perception that a few big companies dominate the sector, there are an estimated 2 million palm oil smallholders in Indonesia controlling about 44% of palm oil estates. In Indonesia, smallholders are involved in plasma schemes, a partnership with big growers, or they are independent. GAR has been supporting, of the pl supporting the plasma scheme since 1990, and there are over 68,000 plasma smallholders in our concessions in Indonesia. They supplied about 22% of our total intake of fresh fruit bunches in 2016. While the company does not own the plasma plantations, they are very closely integrated into our management system, and we take the lead in promoting their success and productivity. In 2016, our smallholders achieved a CPO yield of over 4 tons per hectare, which is among the highest in the industry in Indonesia. Our plasma smallholders have access to high-yielding seeds and good quality fertilizers. We also ensure knowledge transfer through regular training on good agricultural practices. In contrast, independent smallholders, some of whom own plots as small as 2 hectares, tend towards low yields of 2 to 3 tons per hectare. Inefficient production is a concern because it means lower income for the farmer, which can lead to increased pressure to clear more land for agriculture in the hopes of boosting earnings. Gar believes the solution lies in being able to convince independent farmers to replant with high quality seeds, which could lead them to double or triple their yields on existing plots. We are doing this through helping independent farmers access loans under the innovative financing scheme. This money helps supplement their incomes during the four years it takes for the palm tree to mature and produce harvest. The loans also allow the farmers to buy certified high-quality seeds, fertilizer and rent equipment to clear land. In 2016, we helped independent farmers near our operations in Riau and Jambi secure loans of 107 billion Indonesian rupiah from a state-owned bank. 
we are also helping farmers obtain Indonesian Sustainable Palm Oil Certification. As at end 2016, GA had helped over 430 farmers participate in the scheme. Our commitment to traceability and transparency throughout our supply chain is important to meet a growing demand on the part of our customers for certified sustainable palm oil. We continue to progress with our certifications under the RSPO, ISPO and ISCC schemes and these details are updated regularly on the GAR website. GAR believes R&D and the use of technology is crucial for responsible palm oil. We continue to carry out R&D on developing new seeds that are super high yielding. We've just announced the release of two new seeds that can produce up to 10 tons per hectare. This R&D focus on better yield, disease resistance, as well as resistance to extreme weather phenomena is part of our response to climate change risks and it's how we believe we can help assure food security as the world population continues to grow. The Smart Research Institute is also looking at how palm oil estates actually help in carbon fixation, as well as how to better reduce other greenhouse gases. Our downstream R&D division is busy reformulating consumer products to take into account health concerns over trans fatty acids and eliminating potential contaminants. With that, we come to the end of the presentation. <laughs>